I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. About 30 people holding signs showed up outside Bloomingburg Village Hall last evening. The latest public uh, effort to show their anger and frustration over construction of a highly controversial housing development and what they see is in action by local, state, and federal agencies. The protest was timed with the latest cancellation of a village board meeting that residents say is the latest effort by the board to duck opponents of the 396-unit development, which is reportedly being marketed to Hasidic Jews. Those who gathered outside Village Hall last night say they feel sold out and are demanding a thorough investigation into the circumstances surrounding the development agreement. We've written letters to the Attorney General, we've written letters to the Inspector General, the Comptroller, Housing and Urban Development. We, uh, we need a say around here. We, uh, we all live here, this all impacts us, and a lot of it's falling on deaf ears. We, uh, we need the Solomon County District Attorney or the, the Attorney General to come in and do an investigation. Everybody knows that there's all sorts of fraud going on, and you know, it's not our job to investigate it. We're not, we're not the judge, jury, and, ex and executioner by any stretch of the imagination. We need, uh, we need help from the top. We need help from Albany. We need some sort of help from somebody, and a lot of it seems like it's been falling on deaf ears. This was at least the third time since August that the Bloomingburg Village Board has failed to meet. Protesters have said uh, what they're opposed to is the high-density housing project in their tiny village and not the religion of its future residents. They say they have their man. Police have arrested a suspect for the rape of an 80-year-old town of Platykill woman in her home last Sunday morning. 26-year-old Brandon DeVoe of Modena has been charged with first-degree rape and first-degree burglary. Police say the woman was awakened when uh, DeVoe broke into the Route 32 residence during the early morning hours. State Police Major Patrick Regan says the evidence developed during the investigation of the sexual assault led them to DeVoe. Work in the investigation involved pursuing numerous leads initially and the, the collection of physical evidence at the scene. That developed this subject as a suspect uh, when he was questioned. He made statements that confirmed some of our hypotheses about his presence at the crime scene, and, and we developed a probable cause to arrest him through that evidence and the interview of him. The work done by the Platico Police, by the Ulster County Sheriff's Office, our cooperation with the District Attorney's Office in Ulster County, uh, it, it, this is a crime that easily could have gone unsolved for a long time, and, and to bring someone, have someone under arrest, as quickly as we did speaks to that level of cooperation and the professionalism of all the agencies involved. The woman was treated and later released from St. Luke's Cornwall Hospital. Regan said the victim knew of her attacker, but that they were not well acquainted. Police say it did not appear anything was taken from the residents. Police in New Windsor are hoping the public can help them identify the man who robbed a local Rite Aid pharmacy at gunpoint Thursday afternoon. Police say the man posed as an employee of a soft drink company and asked the manager of the Windsor Highway store to show him the location of coolers and the product inventory, all the while appearing to write on an official looking clipboard he carried. Once the manager opened the office door, the suspect pulled a handgun and ordered the manager to open the two safes. After tying up the woman and ordering her to lie on the floor, the man left with bags filled with an undisclosed amount of cash. Anyone with information concerning the robbery is asked to call Town of New Windsor Police at 845-565-7000. When Joseph Rodriguez is returned to an Ulster County courtroom in January, he'll face a 25 years to life prison sentence. The 44-year-old New Paltz man was convicted late Thursday on a second degree murder charge for the brutal beating of his two-year-old niece behind his home in June of 2012. Little Asia Perez had been staying at the Rodriguez home with relatives visiting from the Dominican Republic. The verdict came following 10 hours of jury deliberations. After the killing, police say Rodriguez created a fake crime scene in order to try to convince investigators that the child had been the victim of an intruder who had broken into the house. In Pike County, a Matt Morris man faces a long stretch in prison. After a jury convicted him of two knife point robberies in Matt Morris, back in October 2012. Following the three-day trial, the jury returned guilty verdicts against 22-year-old Ian Mott on charges that included robbery, recklessly endangering another person, and conspiracy to commit witness intimidation. 
Mott uh, robbed Smokers Paradise and weeks later, Karen's Flea Market. Police say following the robberies, Mott tried to get a companion to change his story and get rid of evidence. Kevin Hudson is making it official today. The former Washingtonville mayor formally announcing his plan to seek the state assembly seat to be vacated by Orange County Clerk-elect Annie Rabbit. Hudson, a Republican, was elected mayor in 2011 and lost in his bid for re-election two years later amid a series of controversies including the demolition of the former Village Hall and the hiring of his uh, brother and business partner to Village Jobs. Also vying for the 98th district seat, current Republican Deer Park Town Supervisor Carl Brabenick. No Democrat has yet to come forward. The candidates will be chosen by their political parties. Governor Andrew Cuomo will schedule a special election for early next year. The winner will have to run again for a full term in November. And City of Newburgh officials, along with members of the Greater Newburgh Partnership, gathered this morning to dedicate freedom. The latest completed artwork in a series of murals painted by Francisco Dasic Fernandez, an international star of the graffiti art world. Uh, the colorful work of art is part of a Newburgh mural project called Life in Colors, which is aimed at giving Newburgh neighborhoods a new, unique look, all the while promoting Newburgh's reputation as a mural hotspot. Freedom can be seen in a highly visible spot in the city at Colden and Water Streets. Sunshine will dominate our weather for a good chunk of the weekend. It'll be partly sunny on Saturday and milder with the highs in the middle 50s. Sunday will begin with a little sunshine, but clouds and the threat of rain will move in later in the day. Temperature Sunday will again reach the middle 50s. Get caught up on all that's happening this weekend by starting your day with the Times-Herald Record and stay connected to breaking news all weekend long right here at Record Online. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.